Hey, welcome everyone. Happy holidays. Happy Inauguration Day. Looking forward to the transition and what's happening. Today, we're going to discuss Clubhouse. I did a three-hour marathon stage appearance on Clubhouse the other day, and I was asked some really good questions. I'm not here to promote Clubhouse. I just want to share some of the experiences. Some people out the audience came up to the stage and asked some excellent questions. Uh, this platform is a really new platform that we're trying out, experimenting with. So definitely, I want to encourage you, if you can get an invite to Clubhouse, uh, try and do so. If you having problems with it, uh, reach out to us and let us know. This is our number on the screen that you can text one of our associates. Um, I am looking at those texts all the time. So if you got any questions, you need uh, someone to sponsor you or help you get in, let us know. But the interesting thing uh, today is someone asked a question about whether or not they should be pursuing state contracts, uh, city contracts, or federal contracts. And that seems to be a hot topic all the time for people who are just getting started in the government arena. And the conversation today I want to discuss with you is my uh, feelings on state contracts, local contracts, uh, as well as federal contracts. Uh, I typically tend to have a presence um, or I'm sorry, a preference uh, in terms of going federal, but Given the nature of events that's been happening in the last uh, year and moving forward, it looks like there may be some opportunities and I may be changing my stance on that. Uh, but today, let's just jump right into it. One of the recommendations that I gave uh, when I was speaking to folks on Clubhouse was that if you are deciding to go into the local contract arena, okay, if you've made that decision and you said, hey, I'm thinking about going to the local co contracting arena, uh, here in Miami-Dade County, we have these advisory boards. And I recommend it to the person that was asking the question that take a look at the local advisory board for your local city, municipality. And then when you look at that, um, find out when they are in the meetings and then try and attend a meeting. So here in Miami-Dade County, and I looked up, uh, you, again, you might have to play around and do some searches. You may have to call the, the local municipal offices, uh, but definitely uh, take a look and see if you can get some inside information with the local advisory board for your particular arena and your area. Why? Because there's a lot of good things going on. It says here, this is, we have a small business uh, development center in Miami-Dade County designed to help small businesses. And this is where I started, truthfully. When we first got started, this is what I was doing because I didn't know any difference. So again, naturally, someone said, go government contracts. We went here and we started at the local level. Uh, we had some folks in there that helped us out and helped us with our registrations, didn't cost us any money. But here, you can see here, there's recommendations that are made um, to the small business. Uh, this is called the Small Business Enterprise Advisory Board for construction, but they also have it for goods and services, and they also have it here for architect and engineering. And uh, from this, they actually issue reports on their meetings because, again, it's these are this is a public entity, and as a government entity, they have to document everything, so they do issue reports that you can go back and look at. The recommendation that I oftentimes offer up to folks is to attend the meetings, right? So again, now things are virtual, so you should be able to join a webcast of some sort that they have on there. But I recommend that folks attend these meetings. Uh, you're going to learn a lot in the meetings. You're going to meet people first and foremost, uh, but then you're going to also learn a lot about how your local government procures goods and services. And I think that's so critical for most people. We seem to um, believe that uh, the attending uh, the government uh, or municipal building is only for when you have t parking tickets or paying taxes. But there's a lot of other services that the municipal buildings and your local cities offer that can be beneficial to you, particularly those of us who now want to start our own small business. You have to get active. You got to participate. People have to see your face, know your name, and be able to identify you and say, hey, you are that electrical guy, right? Yeah, I mean, wear your logo. This is the time to to carry your brand around with you. So again, when you are on camera, uh, even in your background, I've had people put you know their logos in the background, kind of like um, 
when you go to one of those award shows. Uh, but again, let people know who you are so that the more exposure you get, the more opportunities that will create for you. And also the more you'll learn about who are the good contractors, who are the bad contractors. This is what I recommend doing. Uh, but I wanted to show you really quickly on this particular report. And this is going to be like a two part video. Uh, this is the first part of that video. I don't want to make it beyond about 20 minutes because I know people get bored. So I'm going to make two parts to this. Uh, this is the first part where we're going over uh, participating in your particular industry or I'm sorry, your particular city's uh, boards for your respective industry. And then the second part is going to be why I I believe that state and local contracts, uh, given if we continue down the path that we're continuing, uh, should create and open up some opportunities for folks out there. So this is, again, this is part one of a two-part video series that I'm making. Uh, so again, we're here at the Miami-Dade County page for Small Business and Enterprise Advisory Board. Uh, I went ahead and clicked this March calendar, and this is the March 2020 uh, last meeting that they had. And again, things are changing with covid but even if even if there are your local particular uh, group stop having meetings as a result of the pandemic, uh, again, you can still go back in and check archive information. Now, looking at this report, what are, Eric, what am I looking for in the report? Now, the, again, they're different. They're they're there's they're they they waver in terms of the information that's required to put on it. But I think for the most part, it will give you uh, some um, knowledge and insight into your local government, how it works. Uh, by the way, LaWanda Wright Robinson, who's here, uh, she, she's been doing this since I first started. So God bless her soul. She's been doing this a long time. Lori Johnson's been there a long time as well, helping small businesses. Great, great, great advocates. When I first got started on my first couple contracts, they were there. Uh, they were probably closer to the bottom of the total pole. Now they're at the top of the charts. So look in here, old business, new business, uh, reasonable opportunity to be heard. Uh, you also, by attending these events, get your chance to be heard for your voice. Uh, and then you can ask questions. But I want to show you something because this is this is the area that I, I talk about a lot. And one of the things, and it was just coincidentally that they happen to have here uh, on this chart, it says here, uh, assistance provided small business enterprise program. And then it talks about certification assistance. Uh, year-to-date totals, needs, assessment meetings, technical assistance, and then payment issues. And they actually created a category entitled payment issues, payment issue related dollars, $1.24 million. Now, this is fascinating because uh, at the time of this chart, uh, contract issues and then co contact with SBE uh, highlighting contract opportunities. Uh, this is, when you're looking at it and people often ask me, Eric, well, why do you say those things? Why do you make those presumptions about state and local contracts? Because this time after time, uh, whenever I'm, I'm speaking somewhere on a professional stage and speaking to folks and there's an audience and, and there's people that can hear me. Not 90, not 80, not 70, 100 percent of the time, someone in the audience, someone that's listening, someone that's watching has had a similar experience. So for me, I've concluded not only of my own experiences, not only the experiences of my friends, but the experiences of those persons in the audience. Um, so right there, $1.2 million and uh, payment related issues is a big deal. And, and to be frank with you, I believe those are only the issues that were brought forth to the board. If you add in the issues that were not brought forward to the board, you're probably going to get double or triple that number. So again, this particular part one is not really to highlight focus in on the payment issues, but it is more of how do you start learning and investigating and making the best possible decision for your business, right? And so that's what I'm here to help you do is I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you all the information so that you can go out and do your own due diligence, your own homework, your own research, and then you can determine the best possible path for your particular small business. And that's what we want out here. But if you go through this, this particular report, which is 156 pages, it's actually a pretty good good report. I, I enjoy the report thoroughly. Uh, this also is a lot of the reasons why people ask me about minority contracting and I'm black owned or I'm Hispanic owned because at the local levels, they still prioritize those particular things. But you have to learn 
vocabulary, vernacular, uh, and you have to learn how to speak to your audience. If you are bilingual and you're speaking to a primarily English audience, I think you would speak English. And if you were speaking to primarily uh, Hispanic audience, I think you would speak Spanish. Uh, so the same thing here, we cannot talk uh, federal contracting to the local government and we can't talk local contracting to the federal arena. And a lot of times folks get their words jumbled uh, and their messages jumbled and you would be surprised how many people at the federal level take offense for the words that people are using improperly or incorrectly. So we want to just help you uh, by trying to relate. Um, the more you can relate to the particular, your audience members, the, folk, the person of your focus, of your attention at the time, uh, the more likely they are to uh, like, know, and trust you and believe that you are credible. Uh, but this is where when people talk about minority contracting and they talk about um, I'm black, I'm male, I'm, I'm Hispanic, I'm woman, female, this is what you're talking about here, right? And this is at the local level. Federal government, you will not see uh, these types of reports. Uh, but again, here they talk about uh, there's uh, the amount of opportunities. Uh, there were 87 projects awarded for $61 million. There were seven projects awarded for a total of $33 million that were eligible for small business participation. Of the 33, of the 33 million, three projects with small business SBE construction measures total $33 million or 10%. And then there were six uh, open market non-set-aside projects for $4.7 million. It talks about the total value of the contracts, and we're not going to get into the, the nitty-gritty reports, but it, it lists here all the contractors' information, all the people who are working on these projects, uh, and then it goes into uh, other projects outside of this particular goal. So then it looks at jobs at the airport. Uh, and I, I mean, I've actually, it's funny, believe it or not, I've used these reports in my past to find subcontractors who I want to work with. So for example, Lunacon, I mean, they're huge. They're a prime and a sub, just depends on the project. Uh, but they're doing 20 plus million dollars a year. Patricia, Patricia Bonilla was on my podcast. And so you could find her on there. But again, a lot of this information, which people don't understand, is public information. You just have to do some digging around and find it. Uh, this is how I, I, when I'm looking for a subcontractor in an area that I'm new to, these are the places where I go. If this person, I mean, I don't have to ask them for their past performance. If I see them on this list, they're already working on, um, on government projects. So they're familiar with government projects, right? You don't have to take their word for it. You don't have to believe what they say. It's here in black and white. Uh, another thing that's interesting about this report, I'm pushing up about 13 minutes. I'm monitoring my time today, is, again, uh, projects that are operating within Miami-Dade County by some of the major primes, and then they're added into this report. So here we look at Jackson Health Systems, and here you go. Uh, this project with Skanska and Jackson Health Systems, the total value awarded, um, total value of costs of work, the total value of contract of SBEs. Uh, here's the percentage completion. Uh, it goes into the breakouts. And then, again, it lists uh, some of their major uh, SBE construction persons and their contract values. So uh, th th all of this information is good information. Uh, whether or not uh, you can make a determination as to whether you should pursue state, local, or federal. Maybe not, but this is great information to have to find out uh, also where you can fit your lane, right? Uh, so if you go in and you see one of your competitors on this particular list or one of these respective lists, you go, oh, okay, this is where they're going after. So now you know in your brain who is a potential uh, prime contract that you can work with as well because your competitors working for that person. So a lot of good research. And it just, I always remind people to start with the research. Let the research guide your activities. Uh, when when talking with, I gave an example uh, on the stage on Clubhouse, I said that, because um, someone asked me, hey, what kind of stuff does the government buy? And I asked eight different people on the stage what services they provided to the government. So Mebs is one of our interns who works here at GovCon Giant. Uh, he sells clay shooting targets. And what he did was he researched a small municipality uh, that was, I was either New Jersey or New York, a small town area that were looking for something very specific where, again, not a lot of people provided those services. 
So there are opportunities out here. I think that what happens is we uh, get lazy and we decide to just go with uh, the first thing that someone tells us as I think step back and do some research, dig around. Look at these companies, uh, IGWT Construction. They're uh, sub tier one, tier two, 1.9 million, $1 million contracts. You know, if you are bidding a job at an Air Force base and you're looking for some companies, these folks are used to working as subcontractors. Great. Keep look. Z Roofing, $1 million roofing contract. Hey, I'd look at hiring Z Roofing. Uh, here, MMAC, AC and Refrigeration, American Industrial Management Corporation. Okay, Caucasian white male, so maybe not. But like you say, uh, construction. Uh, but they consider it small business, so they're falling into threshold. Um, 16 Hispanic firms, 7 African American firms, 3 Caucasian firms. Miami Breakers, Miami, uh, Micon Scaffolding, Southern Blossom. So, uh, and then the good thing about the report, like I said, it goes into all of the different, the major opportunities in construction. Uh, what they're doing, this particular contract value was $133 million. Uh, looks like they took about whatever the difference is, $17 million in fees. Uh, and then goals and the goals, CSB contractors. Here are all the contractors. These are people that I would consider using uh, for any of my projects that I had coming down the pipeline. So I, I think that all of us, all of us have the opportunity to uh, attend one of these events and or find this information online or at least now you have a point of reference that you can call your local city municipality and say hey do you have any type of advisory board of similar scope and nature uh, this is part one of a two-part series where i'm entitling state local federal contracts which one should i do which one should i consider and how i believe that if we continue along the path uh, of what's happening now with the continuing um, uh, passing of stimulus packages and funds, that it may uh, become an opportunity where I think that a lot of small businesses, uh, it may not be as bad as it once was in terms of going after these contracts and getting paid because they are being backed by the government's uh, strong arm. So, now we're going to look at um, part two is the three different stimulus packages and how they are lending a hand to offset the funding um, shortage falls for the state and local government. So stay tuned for part two of our series. We're going to jump right in right now.